Today we're going to talk about table 22055. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Craig Michaud. I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to discuss table 22055. I've done a video of this before. Uh, I did it when we were doing a service calculation. Today I'm just going to break down all the different columns and what's used and what's most used. Hopefully this will give you a, another tool for you to help pass your electrical journeyman's exam. Okay, so I've decided to do another video on table 22055 based on the fact that I've been getting a lot of comments and questions on, you know, am I sizing this to figure out what size breaker I'm putting in? Is this something that I'm going to use to... Well, we're going to clarify all of that today. What is the difference between sizing something based on finding the demand for the range. Well, guess what? They're not the same. What you're going to do in table 22055 is only going to be based for your service calculations. How you size your range, that's going to be based on basic Ohm's law. You find out what the KW is, you take the voltage, you divide it by the two, and guess what? You find out what your amperage is, size it up, bing, bang, boom. Whatever you have, that's what you're gonna go with, okay? At this point, I shouldn't have to show you that because we've already done that in other videos. Today, I just wanna go over a little bit more of how to kind of navigate through 22055 and what does the note one really mean? So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start here, column A. Column A means what? Well, column A is going to be up to three and a half KW. Remember, the three and a half KW stands for 3,500 watts. So column A is only going to cover 3,500 watts and below, okay? You, at this point, should have out your code book. You're going to be looking to see at the chart and you'll see on the chart that it'll say 80%. Okay, remember, in column A, you're going to take all those numbers as percentages. So, we're going to go, we're going to do one range. We're going to multiply this by 80%, and it's going to give us 2,800 watts. Get that correct there. So, if we were sizing a single-family service, okay, and we had a 3,500 watt range in it. We're going to use the demand factor of 2,800 watts. Like I said, this has nothing to do with sizing your range or anything like that when it comes to sizing the conductor of a breaker or a conductor, okay? You're not going to size anything from this. The only thing this number is going to be good for is the demand for your single family service feeder calculation. So let's move on to column B. Okay, so column B is going to be covering three and a half kW to eight and three quarter kW. Remember, this means 3,500 watts to 8,750 watts. Okay, that's what we're covering. And again, we don't really have to go too far in this, but if you look back into the column B, you'll see that for one range, it's 80% as well. So let's say, for instance, we have an 8,000 watt range. If I have an 8,000 watt range, it falls in column B. So we'll multiply this by 80%. We'll calculate the 8,000 watt, multiply it by 80%, it's going to give us 6,400 watts. Again, when sizing one individual range in a single family service calculation, you're going to take the percentage, 80% for one, you're going to multiply the size of the range by the 80%, that number will be used for your demand factor. Again. We're not sizing anything else, just the service. A 
let's look at column C. Okay, column C is up to 12 kW, so that means when you look at column B, it says 8 and 3 quarters, so from 8 and 3 quarters, or 8,750 to 12 kW, or 12,000, you're going to use the numbers in that column by thousands, or kilo, okay? So, one range is 8,000. Now I'm going to blow your mind. If I have a range that's 9,000 watts, or yeah, 9,000 watts, and I'm going to do a service calculation for it, in the service calculation, the demand of that 9,000 watts is 8,000. I'll do you one better. If you have a 10,000 watt range, and you're sizing a single family service, you have one range, the demand factor is still 8,000. You want to know about 11? What about 12? If I have a 12 kW range, it's still 8,000. Kind of confusing, a little bit, but let's put it this way. You, as an electrician, have to remember that we're talking about overall demand to size our service conductors, okay? So again, our range isn't on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What, maybe one day, a week, one day a year, you might see it on for more than six hours? But for the most part, guys, your range, your service is never really gonna see this full load for a really extended period of time. So this is why they put these demands in place, again, Larger range, a little bit more efficient, could be, or it could not be. This is something that I want you guys to remember. But if I was to take a 15 kW range, okay, I'm going to put 15 kW over here. If I was to take that 15 kW range, I got to now refer to note one in table 22055. Note one states that if I have a range from 12 kW to 27 kW, okay, I have to add 5% to the demand of each range or the demand of the range by 5% for every thousand over the 12 kW. Again, if I have anything over 12 kW to 27 kW, I've got to add 5% for every thousand or thereof, I'll explain that in a minute, to add to my demand factor. Okay, so now we're going to do this. Here's my 15 kW range. This 15 kW range is obviously greater than 12 kW, correct? Let's minus 12 kW. That leaves us 3,000. That means we are three one thousands over 12 kW. So the note states 5%. So I'm going to take 5% times it by three, that's gonna give me 15. This is now gonna be called 15%. So, sounds pretty easy, but let me show you a little trick to calculate this very quickly. When we are dealing with one range, that is 15 kW in a single family service calculation, we still, We'll take the 8,000 because that's what's in the column C stating as the demand factor. Now, that demand has to be increased 5% for every 1,000 over that 12 kW. We've got 15, that means we're 3,000 over. So we've got to multiply this by 1.15 and this is going to give us 
9,200 watts, okay? Now, how many of you are saying, why did you add the one? Where did the one come from? It's basic math. If I take this one and I multiply it by 8,000, that's gonna give me 8,000, correct? If I take 15%, it's gonna give me, if I go 15%, times 8,000, it's gonna give me 12. Now I have to add another step in by adding the 8,000 to that 12. I can't tell you how many people I've had in the past go through and come up with a number of 1,200 and put that in as a demand factor. The 8,000 is something we have to have. The 1,200 has to be added to it. But if I add a one here, guess what? Soon as I calculate this and punch it in my calculator, this number goes right in the line. I just saved myself some time. I just did a video on trying to, you know, passing my pro tips for passing the electrical uh, journeyman's exam. Um, I'm going to put a card up here so you can link back to that if you'd like to see it. One of the biggest things that I preach is you got to have that extra time. And things like this, these little tricks like this, help every time, okay? This just takes a lot of steps away, okay? Some of you guys probably could do this in your head, great. Some of you guys are gonna to need to use calculator. That's fine too. But if you do this, this way with a calculator, it's still faster than if you calculated the 15% and then added 8,000 to it, okay? Again, it just makes things easier. The whole point of my videos is to help you guys calculate these, um, load demands to kind of build up into a single family service calculation or even a multiple uh, family service calculation. So we're breaking down these individual charts, doing the different calculations to make life easier for you. So with column C, we have to do a little bit more. And again, you may, under, you may understand up to 12, you may understand up to 15, but let's do one better. Let's go to 21 kW. All right, so let's do 21 kW. We're still doing one range. Remember, we've got a minus 12 from this, and this is going to leave us what? 9,000. So the little trick that I did before is I multiplied 9 by 5 because this is my percentage, each percentage over. This is going to give me 45. So now, remember, I have to do what? I have to take the 8,000, multiply it by 1.45, and this is going to give me a number of 1,100 or 11,600. This would be a demand for a 21 kW range. Let's do it even better. What if we had three that we had to size? We're gonna do three 21 kW ranges. Let's do this. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna do three. So I'm gonna put up here three. K3, okay, we're going to do 21K okay, ranges. This is still going to be how many over 12? It's still going to be 9,000. So our calculation, 5% times 9 is going to still equal 45%. Okay? But, wait, there's more. We're going to now go down the side where it says number of ranges, and we're going to calculate for three. So when you slide your finger all the way across column C, and you come down to three, you're going to see a number there. That number is going to be 14. 14 actually stands for this. So if I had three ranges just at 12 kW, this would be my demand. But guess what? 
we have three 21 kW. So we now have to add that demand to it. So we're going to take our 14,000, we're going to multiply it by 1.45, and this is going to give us a number 20,300. This is now our demand for three, three, 21 kW ranges. Okay, so after we just understood column C, let's go back to column B. We're gonna do four 7,000 watt ranges. What do we do with that? I'm gonna take four, seven kW ranges, Okay, and we're going to take them at a percentage. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 7,000, we're going to multiply it by 4, this is going to give us 28,000. Okay, so now what we did is we came through and we figured we had to add them all together and give us 28,000. Now, at this point, we'll take the percentage of that. By taking the percentage of that, if you look in column B, come down, you'll see that it, there's a 50. So that stands for 50%. So we're going to multiply this by 50%. And this here, 50% of 28,000 is going to be what? 14,000. It's very simple. We've got 14,000, that becomes our demand. I hope this video helped. If this video helped, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. You know, click the bell so you get notifications. You know, I'm putting videos out every Friday. This way here, you guys can stay on top of any electrical code change. Now, I've used this code before. Uh, again, like I said, I've got cards throughout the video here to you know to kind of go over videos that I've done before but again uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down calculations for the next probably few months just so that we can start to understand that hey wait a minute here we're in a pandemic some people are needing to go take their journeyman's exam uh, there's not a lot of places out there and if they are out there doing in person you know their cost is a little bit more expensive if I can help you pass your journeyman's exam by showing you how to do some calculations, well, that's great, okay? Uh, I did a video on how to pass the journeyman's exam or my tips on passing the journeyman's exam. You know, check that out if you wouldn't mind. Do me a favor, go back and check out some of my older videos. I really would appreciate the views. As always, have a great day and be safe.